Hi, how are you doing? Welcome back to Smoking Cheltenham. Hope you're well. You won't need a flask today. Should be a pretty short video. Uh, just got a few more selections to put up. And, yeah, just a chat about a few things coming up. Right, we'll, uh, we'll kick off then. Yeah, we'll just tidy this Browns up a bit. We've got a bit of a project going on here, haven't we, with the Browns? And we're just looking at it, how we'd sort of state it. Just to tidy it up a little bit, we'll have just one more point on K de Bourbon at 25s now. So most of those we put up in Browns have already come in a little bit. They did look big, didn't they? And yeah, he were 33s before. He's 25 now at 365. We'll just have one more point on him. And all that does, it means we, we've got five, haven't we? We've got a proper mini squad for it, Browns. But all that means is we're going to get at least sort of between 50 and 100 points back or so for either one. I didn't really want to leave him short when I looked at it compared to the others because I do like him. Uh, like I say, he's only a five-year-old. A oh, good run in the Martin Pipe. It looks like he'd love the three mile. Looks all over a chaser. And I was thinking, do you know, like the grade one three mile at Punchestown, the novice race, you could see a few from the Martin Pipe going for that. You know, you look at the Albert Bartlett. Yeah, you, you wouldn't be surprised if something out of the Martin Pipe w took that grade one and, and it could be Kay de Bourbon. So he's only five, so it's a bit of an ask, but yeah. I could see that, to be honest. So yeah, we'll have another point on him. Right then, and the other selection for Charlton. Right. <laughs> you know... You know, Mark on his Cheltenham chat video has put this horse up and we've got to get on the train. We already went off the cliff for him. I don't know, what a lifeboat or something floating about now. But yeah, uh, Fassal Vega, we're going to have a point, just a point on him at 33s. That's for 365 for the stairs hurdle. I know, I know. But it's a good bet at them prices I'd say yeah our special one is uh, I mean let's be honest he's struggled with the jumping a bit hasn't he? he jumped some fine but others not so much he's, he doesn't jump how he looks like he should and I don't know where else He's going to go, will he, with this horse? You know, a bit like Sigurd, I can see him going back over hurdles with him, and he's not going to be a champion hurdle horse. You know, his, his uh, pedigree would give you some hope there, he'd get the three mile, you know. Quavega, his mum, she got three mile at Punchestown anyway. Uh, you know, I wouldn't quite know if he's going to get the three mile in a stairs hurdle but at 33 to 1 he's worth just a point we'll just have a bit on him eh? and then we're kind of done with him if you, if you see him entered up over hurdles if Willie gives him an hurdle entry at Bunchestown that 33s will, will will absolutely crash like you know so yeah he's, he's well worth a point at 33s in all seriousness he is okay Yeah. Right then. I did have a look at the national. Um. Yeah, it's hard race as you'd expect. I I used to love the national. I did. You know, you you wanted some off like ten and a half stone. It weren't the lottery people made out it were. I thought you could get a shortlist together quite easily for the National. The race has changed now, hasn't it, over the years. 
you've got these like cotton wool fences they go faster they've, they've cut the field size so you know we've got a stack of horses there sort of rated in the 150s they sort of compressed it a little bit but I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out over the next few years uh, younger horses have been coming to the fore aren't they i think that might be a pace thing as much as anything else because like say cotton wool fences they just run through them and they go quicker as a result so yeah there has been a trend towards younger horses and the one i've had a only a small bet on it like if you're doing the points thing i had a couple of points on adamantly chosen at 33 to 1 now He's got some classy form, sort of two and a half mile form, you know. As an obvious, he came second to Jerry Colomb in the grade one for Heen. He probably his best run came at the DRF and he ran second to Marty Potter in the grade one there. That were a good run. He had Gerard de Mesnel and Iron Maximus in behind that day. Now, if you ignore the six runs between that and his last run, yeah, you you'd like him um, and his last run were interesting he ran three mile two in soft at down royal and he beat Roy Marsh 14 lengths now, it weren't much a race it kind of fell apart a bit but that's something he's not showed before he did seem to stay that really well and that was three two on soft that was his first run in 18 months he looks like being off around 10 stone 8 in this, which is nice for an horse of his class. There is some gamble in it, of course there is, it's the National and he's a 33 to 1 shot. You know, it's, it's more can he get into a rhythm, he's, he's ran disappointing in a, a few like big field handicaps, although he did run well in a big field handicap hurdle over hurdles so you know he can hit the odd fence don't really matter though does it in the national um so if he can get into a rhythm i think he's he's got a good chance and at 33 to 1 yeah i thought he was worth a little go the only other horse i backed in the national and this was a little while back is i am maximus and i put him up as like my second go in it if you like um i am maximus you know that horse has haunted me and i kind of backed him just as an insurance policy for myself because i thought if i don't back him he's gonna win this like you know honestly that's why i backed him um but you look at him in all seriousness he's an irish national winner he, he's won like grade one two and a half mile didn't he earlier this season He's, he's got everything you'd want in a national horse. You know, traditionally you'd say he doesn't jump well enough. He does make the odd mistake. It's, it's not as important now, though, is it? And he's, he's got the stamina. He's, he's kind of got everything for me. And he's, you know, are those sort of towards the front of the market? I think he's around 10 to 1 now. Yeah, no, I think he's a pretty sound, he's, he's got a, a sound chance at around that price. So we've got I Maximus and Adamantly Chosen. And they might be my only two selections for the race. I don't think I'm going to get quite into it in the way I have, uh, in the way I normally do, you know. Right, and uh, Fairy House. Right, the Irish National. I did play this before I did my last video, but the prices had kind of gone. I backed three horses, so I'll tell you what I backed anyway. Um, I backed Nick Rocket each, I backed them all each way. So I had more on the win part than the each way part, but yeah, I backed Nick Rocket, but he's into like four to one now. But he's, you know, we mentioned him all season, well, for a good while, haven't we, for this race? That we thought he'd be holding him back for the Irish National. His last three wins have come at Fairy House. You know, his form looks strong. It ties in there. We, um, Monty Star, don't it? That, that beginner's chase with Monty Star and Corbett's Cross, you know. 
because we thought at the time that would work out well. And yeah, it, it's working out well, isn't it? He looks blindingly obvious. I'm not telling you anything that's not obvious there. The price is, you know, four to one. Andy Post is horrible, really. I wouldn't be rushing in to back him now at fours. Hopefully he might get a little bit bigger on the daylight, you know, or at least when the non-runner no bet comes in. But I, I backed him anyway. Uh, but I got quite a bit bigger than the fours, like, you know. Uh, the other one I played there, uh, Desert Moor House for Martin Brazil. He's also been well backed, but you can still get a bit of 12s for him. I think he looks a solid each way bet. Um, it he caught my eye of hurdles last time. He gave him a prep for hurdles over this. I thought he was really eye-catching. He ran a nice race there. He's up £9 from his Kerry National win. But it's Brazil. You know how good this guy is at targeting races. And I'm sure he's just laid him out for this from then. He is £9 higher though in this. I think he looks a solid each way chance. Uh, he's only had the six chase starts. The other one there, and this is still a nice price, this one, if you wanted to play this one. Say, so Desert Moor House 12s, I think that's a fine price each way, to be fair. Uh, is Favre de Champo, another novice, uh, about three novices here. Uh, novices have a good record in, in this race. Now, Favre de Champo, you look at its form and he's just reading now like, he needs to go right-handed, and if that's right, if that is right, then he looks a nice price for this. Um, he's run three times left-handed at Cheltenham last year in the Albert Bartlett pulled up, and the last twice where he's run poorly, albeit in decent races. Uh, his first two races of the season, he ran at Galway first time up. He ran well. To two miles six just behind Affidale Fury who I think's got a bit of class about him he well only beat just over length by him and then he took the grade two Florida Pearl didn't he at Punchestown in good style um, the race did fall apart that day but visually he did look good say so two runs since then left handed good and didn't send him to Cheltenham I think he's holding back for this and yeah you can get a bit of 20 still for him and that, that, that's my little squad for that race anyway. That's the three I played. Uh, Favre de Champo would like it if it came up soft heavy. The other two probably prefer a bit of better ground, but they'll, they'll go on it on the soft light. And the last one I wanted to talk about, and, and this I did this video as much for this horse as anything, maybe a little bit more. It's just... I'm quite excited about this. Um, right. The Ribo listed two mile handicap hurdle. Now, you look at this race and you think you shouldn't be getting too excited about anything in here. It does look red hot. It's fiercely competitive. I think there's 33 entered at the moment. The horse, though, that just leapt out at me is this Jit Langi for JP and Willie. He's a five-year-old. He's had four hurdle runs. Two of them came in France. He's had two runs for Willie. His first were last May when he won a maiden hurdle. He easily beat a horse called Sam Uai, who ran ninth in the county. He looked classy that day. He went off two to five, so he's obviously held in some regard. He didn't run that win May, and he didn't run then until February at the DRF in that race. In that race, he came fifth to ten, beating 18 and a half lengths behind Ballyburn. Obviously, Ballyburn's gone on and took out the two and a half mile novice, Gallagher, the Gallagher. Slade Steele came out, obviously, and won the Supreme. King of Kingsfield were third. He disappointed in the county. Fourth, Rob Surd. He took the county out. He only finished just over length behind Absurd. 
and that was his first run since May. He made a mistake to out, but apart from that, his jumping, he looked a slick jumper, which augurs well for this. And he just looks to me like he's been plotted up for this. He does. I think this is a plot job for this race. He won't be the only one, I guess, you know. I, but I do, I like this horse. There's no prices yet, so don't go telling everyone just yet. But yeah. Soon as the prices come out, I think they'll it, they'll get priced up. This it'll get priced up in the next day or two. And soon as the prices come out, I'm, I'm going to be back in this fella. I am probably not to my full stake. That's how I normally do the anti post the week. I'll have like normally I'll have half on. I might have a bit more on this guy because I think he could he could be uh, he could be a bit of a gamble maybe. Uh, um, so you need a bit of luck in a race like this, don't you? This nature, so I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't go totally mad on him. But for a race of this nature, he's a strong fancy anyway. I like him, Jit Langi, I do. Um, yeah. Hopefully, you know, we can get on him early and uh, maybe that'll turn out nice for us. He's, he's the sort of horse you could see him put in like you know six to one favourite or you might get a bit of double figures I don't know you don't want daft buggers like me telling you on YouTube you know telling people but you know it's just my opinion and you can look at the race I mean just behind him you know you could fancy plenty daddy long legs finished a place behind him he, he's off one three five here I think at some some point in time he's gonna maybe made a mockery a one three five. Maybe he'll be more punchers down. I don't know, but you know, yeah, there's plenty of nice horses in here with attractive profiles. But I like Jit Langi anyway. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the time later in the week to do like a full fairy house video, which were another reason for doing this one. Um, I might not. I don't know if I can or will, but I might not get the time. I covered a couple of the races there. Obviously, you know, Gaelic Warrior might be running in that Willow Warm, the grade one, two and a half. He's got... Um, you win that anti Willie. Um I don't know if he's gonna run in that. I know he said he was keen to, but he looks a he looks a good race anyway. Bright Day's head and um Jay De Gruzzi could renew acquaintances in the two and a half mile race, but it's a it's quite close to Cheltenham this in it so much will depend how the horses have come out. I do suspect we might see brighter days ahead than Jay De Gruzzi here just because I don't think they could have too much of a hard race at Cheltenham. They went so slow, didn't they, in that, that race. I can't imagine that's took too much out of them. Maybe more so bright days ahead because she were keen all the way around. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, the, uh, it's going to be a brilliant meeting anyway. Um, yeah, it'll be great. And yeah, if I can do a video, I will. But I don't know. So that's it then, basically today. Um, yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it. Should be a great, great Easter meeting this this weekend. Uh, so if I don't see you again, best of luck for it, and I hope you find some winners. Thanks for your time, and I'll either way I'll see you before entry anyway. All right then, bye.